Hello everybody and welcome back. This video is going to be all about my new telescope that's under this cover right now. We're going to try to image with it tonight and I'm going to tell you all about it. My name's Trevor and you're watching Astro Pilot. I present to you the Ioptron 6 inch Richie Crutchen Astrograph. This is my highest focal length telescope I have ever owned. This has a native focal length of 1370 millimeters. That means with my ASI 2600 MC Pro, I get an effective focal length of 2100 millimeters. This is insane. This is going to be the scope I use for this galaxy season. I've already done some test runs collimation um, there's not a ton of information about these scopes on uh, YouTube so I hope to provide some of you guys looking for a budget uh, high focal length telescope um, with some information about these telescopes because Richie Crutchens have a notorious reputation of hard to collimate um, which they're pretty tricky to collimate if you have never collimated a scope me coming from my refractor uh, background with the Xenostar 61, this is a high maintenance telescope um, versus a refractor. This is a Cassegrain reflector design, so light comes in from the front, hits the primary mirror, goes up to the secondary mirror, and then back into the camera. Um, this is just an insane amount of focal length, and I can't wait to see what some of these galaxies are going to look like this season. It's uh, late January, so getting into almost galaxy season here and late at night uh, around midnight even 10 o'clock um, some of the primary galaxy season targets are able to uh, gather light with them so super excited to use this telescope tonight so hope you guys join me in the rest of this video to see the power of this giant Richie Crutchen telescope With all this extra focal length, that means your guiding accuracy has to be spot on. So, I actually made this guide scope myself. I did not buy this guide scope. I've had this uh, old Bushnell 20 by 60, uh, 20 to 60, 60 millimeter spotting scope laying around the house for years and years. It was actually my dad's, and uh, I just removed the stock focuser and. Uh, machined a piece of PVC pipe and pressure fitted the inch and a quarter adapter into it and uh, achieved focus. So now I am guiding with a 60 millimeter, 300 millimeter focal length refractor guide scope now. And this, with the ASI 120mm Mini, this actually gives me the same effective field of view as I'm getting with my 2600 through the Ioptron. So, um, a very good guiding setup, at least I think so, as of now with the amount of focal length this scope has. Um, I can get right up on close on guide stars and lock in and have a nice up close field of view for guiding, which incredibly helps uh, the accuracy versus my old 130 uh, millimeter guide scope I use with the Xenostar that would not work. It would just not be accurate enough. This gives you a nice uh, accurate view of guide stars that can um, accurately track with this big of a setup. And plus it was free. So 
great DIY little project if you guys have any spotting scope laying around that you can easily convert to a guide scope. This RC6 telescope has a primary mirror aperture of six inches. The tube itself is actually a little bit bigger and tonight I'm gonna to put a dew shield on this. Uh, I'm running a dew strap around the back of the scope to prevent any frost or dew forming on the primary mirror. Um, this telescope has a focal ratio of f9 so a little bit slower than what I'm used to but the bigger aperture um, pretty much counteracts that and from the test shots I've already taken the last uh, uh, within the last couple weeks um, it's very uh, very similar to the exposure time and the light gathering power of the Zenith star um, that slower f ratio gets balanced out with the larger aperture so it's not that big of a difference so uh, in my opinion it looks like anyway that I'm collecting the same amount or more light uh, in the same exposure times than I was with the Zenith star even though it's a faster scope and this is slower but again <laughs> I'm super excited to actually try this tonight I have all the equipment I need to actually get a good image um, another thing with this high focal length you're tracking has to be super accurate so number one thing is to get a spot on polar alignment each time get the smallest amount of error as possible um, another thing is have good balance I've actually had to add another 11 pound counterweight so now I'm dealing with an 18 pound payload up here and about 17 and a half pounds of counterweight down here so I have it uh, pretty well balanced right now um, of course the HEQ5 can handle up to 30 pounds. I would not, I wouldn't want to put any more weight than I have to on this just because for astrophotography, especially long focal length deep sky, you don't want to go over around the halfway mark on your mount's payload capacity. Um, but I have been testing this rig for a couple days um, with some spotty uh, clear spots in the sky each night I get a chance to. And I have most of the bugs worked out. My collimation is maybe a tad bit off still. The stars are kind of a little weird looking, definitely near the edges. I know some people use field flatteners with this scope, even though the design uh, says it's a totally flat field, but with a larger APS-C sensor like the uh, 2600 here, you might still get some uh, elongated stars near the edges, which is, deal I mean I can deal with it so it's not a big deal and I am using the ASI Air Pro I haven't mounted on the, the shoe here and the way I have that guide scope mounted I use my old William Optics uh, dovetail clamp that I used to use with the Star Adventure um, so I don't have to worry about any flexure within the guiding system so it is this is a rock solid rig so far but so as you can yeah, as you can see this thing is taller than me here I've got a uh, pretty good declination balance going on right now and we're gonna see how tonight goes. Um, one thing I do want to talk about one more time is um, these telescopes, definitely the RC6, RC8, the uh, lower end range of Ritchie Corrections um, have a bad reputation due to their uh, difficult collimation process which I have collimated this thing myself with a laser and a Cheshire eyepiece twice and when I bought this used the guy that I bought it from included the focus uh, tilt adapter which even enhances your collimation more um, it's a lot of work um, it can be tricky because you're adjusting the secondary primary and tilt adapter here um, but overall, I think I have it nailed in pretty good. The stars are off just a tad, but uh, I can I can tweak it as I as I go. So, but honestly, once you know how to collimate it, it is easy. So, um, don't let people try to talk you out of a scope just for that reason. Once you learn it, it's easy, simple to do. Um, it does take some time, but it's it's actually not bad. And I had no experience whatsoever collimating a telescope coming from a refractor so um, it's actually easy uh, once you learn how to do it so um, I, I think these telescopes will become more um, known 
definitely if you get some information out on YouTube. I know uh, Glenn Clowder, uh, Astro Bloke on YouTube, he used a RC8 before he upgraded to a 10 inch reflector Newtonian. Um, and he had very, uh, very good luck with an RC8, definitely with the galaxies and other targets. So um, these low end Ioptron or GSO brand um, Richie Cretchens um, are, are very nice scopes especially for the price price point and which is around four hundred dollars I got mine for actually less than that so cheap it's very cheap for what it can do especially if you can compare them to Celestron's um, Edge HD 8 or 9 and a quarter inch cast grains um, so yeah it's going to be a cold night tonight. Going to be down to 15 degrees Fahrenheit, so really cold. Luckily, I can control the ASI air from indoors. Um, when I get back, I'm actually going to go fly here in a little bit. Um, I really have good expectations uh, for tonight. And I'm planning on, I might shoot uh, M81 Bode's Galaxy with this focal length, an effective 2100 millimeters with this camera here it gets you right up on some of those very far away galaxies like the Bode's Galaxy, Sunflower Galaxy, stuff that's anywhere from 10 to 30 or 50 million light years away. This telescope will get a good view of it. So, um, interesting fact, um, the Richie Cretchen design is actually the same telescope design as the Hubble Space Telescope. So, in a way, I'm imaging with a mini little micro uh, Hubble telescope here, so that's pretty cool uh, just to know that it's the same design. Um, very interesting and we'll see what tonight holds and I'll see you uh, once it gets dark. Alright guys, so I am back. It is about 7.15 right now. I'm going to uncover the scope and we're going to get shooting. Okay guys, so I just turned on the ASI air and I'm about to polar line on the mount. It's still really windy out here, so I'm not going to use the dew shield tonight. Um, uh, just because that's going to catch more wind. And I'm either going to shoot Bose Galaxy or the Orion Nebula. Um, this gets a super up close view of the Orion Nebula with this much focal length. So I'm freezing out here right now so I'm gonna go through the process of polar lining focusing and uh, all that and then I'll see you guys inside in the warm um, once I get everything set up all right guys so I'm in here where it's warm it's gonna get down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit tonight and right now I am running and shooting on Messier 81 Bode's Galaxy. Look at the field of view of Bode's Galaxy here. That is a uncropped frame. This is live coming in right now from the RC6. Um, it's insane the amount of detail that I'm able to pick up. I mean it's just gonna be a crazy image I think um, with with this scope. It's such high focal length and guiding is relatively going well. I mean at times it's bumped up to maybe 1.5 which is not great for this much focal length but it's been averaging around below uh, one arc second around uh, 0.6 to 0.9 in that range so um, it's, it's working really well um, but yeah if you can make that out there it's a crazy field of view um, I'm gonna be able to image all of these galaxies during galaxy season and it's gonna be crazy but uh, yep there's another frame coming in and my guiding with that DIY guide scope is going great um, I'm dithering guiding and all that stuff I took uh, bias frames and I've already taken um, dark frames uh, a couple weeks ago with this telescope so don't have to worry about dark frames so yeah, all is going well. I did take flat frames with 
I took flat frames with this LED light panel. Um, I got it off Amazon for like 19 bucks, um, really cheap. And it does, this is my first time of use, but it looked like it did really well. Um, at its dimmest setting, it's, it's pretty dim, but I still did put a piece of a white t-shirt over it to uh, just make it a little bit dimmer and get that complete flat field. But honestly, I think I could might use it without anything. Um, so yeah, this probably is going to be a great solution for flats. We'll be able to tell once I start processing this image. But uh, yeah, I read some things. Um, there is a forum on Cloudy Nights. Um, somebody used this same exact one for this telescope, so it worked well for them. So um, really excited to see the final image of what I get tonight. I'm probably going to get around um, four or more hours. I did collect some data on this target with this um, telescope a couple weeks ago with a short little clear night span. Um, so I might add some of that data as well. So everything is running smoothly right now and I probably gonna close out this video I do want to thank everybody for watching um, expect lots of more videos on this telescope but I do want to get into more beginner level stuff for my new subscribers as well so expect some no more um, entry level uh, videos tutorials and star adventure stuff as well but uh, this Richie Cretchen 6 inch from uh, Ioptron is going to be seen a lot this spring and all throughout the year to get high focal length images of some of these deep, si deep sky objects. So um, that's it for tonight. Stay tuned till the end for the final image. And until next time, thank you for watching Astro Pilot and Clear Skies.